This training is going to be split up into two sections. So the first section, we're going to have uh, a bit of lecture, an overview, a good scenario for us to work off of. And then the second half, we're going to cover a demonstration. So we're going to do some live demos uh, with me on, on Splunk, kind of working through a scenario of us mapping um, to the sim. We're going to map to the malware data model and leverage what we've used in lecture to then put forth in a hands-on demonstration. So please ask questions uh, or stop us. Again, this time is yours, but let's dive in. So we're gonna open up with a scenario. Uh, the scenario is all of us are working at the same company on the same team. We have two sites in our environment. We have site one, which we can say is in a cloud instance, you know, Azure, uh, we can go with. And we have some data centers in there and data logs that are coming over and being ingested into our Splunk instance. Over on the right, we have some field names coming in from our cloud site into our Splunk instance, device name, host name, source, status, et cetera. Site two, we can call that our on-premises site. So these are some of the other field names that are coming in from all of our log sources and also being directed and ingested into our Splunk instance. Some other field names of computer name, username, source IP, et cetera. So our scenario is we're at a company and we have no problem with data ingestion, ingestion going into our Splunk instance. But senior leadership has asked us to become SIM compliant. So we as a team have all these log sources coming from our different sites here into our Splunk environment, and we need to figure out how to make them SIM compliant and check the box for our senior leadership's ask of making an org that can state, hey, all of our data is now SIM compliant. Now, all of us are on the team. We have no problem searching in Splunk for events. We've gotten by so far, but over on the right, you'll notice we have a bunch of different fields and some of them kind of have the same meaning. For example, source underscore port is kind of the same as SRC underscore port. And sometimes our source port field is called a different field name for some of our data in some of our indexes, as opposed to data in our other index, in our locations. But we've gotten by and we know that kind of in this index, our source port is called SRC port or it's called source port because we're very familiar with our data. But now our environment's getting very large. We now have our cloud logs coming into our instance. We have two sites now instead of just one. So our question is that we ask of the team is how do we solve working together better as a team to know when we're saying, for example, on the left here, I drew out some fields, when we're talking about the host name of a machine, how do we have some commonality between us as team members to say, it doesn't matter where that field is coming from in our log sources or from what data set, we all wanna call it the same field of host. So let's say if it was coming in as host name from data source one, and now it's coming in as device name from data source two, we all wanna be on the same page and say, let's just call this one value of host. How do we get to that problem? Well, let's play out this scenario for one field at a time. We'll start with host. So we'll say we have a Solaris um, operating system device on a universal forwarder and that log source is coming in with the field name of device ID. We have another one, a Linux box and that data source, the field name is coming in as host. Another one, a Windows machine, that one's coming in as computer name and a Mac OS UF coming in with the field of device name. Well, the solution to this problem, as I'm sure you have guessed, is we're gonna to map to the SIM, the common information model. We're gonna take all of these fields here, map them to the SIM, and then get the same common name for all of us to re refer to that field as host. Now, let's take that same scenario and multiply it and think about all the different sources you can have from your environment and all of the hundreds of difference of field names you can have in your environment. So the first cluster on the bottom left here, that's kind of like our host field. 
the second cluster of four with, with the destination field names, we're gonna map that to a field called dest. Source IP, source device, so a source computer, et cetera, in this third cluster, we can map that to source. And then our last grouping of fields, as we use an example here of username, user, et cetera, we're gonna map that to a field called user. By mapping to the SIM, we've now, this is an oversimplified example, but I'm sure you get the picture. We're now able to take all of these different various fields and always be able to call them the same field name, no matter where the data source is coming from. And it's much easier for us to work together as a team when we're searching our Splunk environment, because we'll know exactly what field name to leverage in our searches, building out detections, et cetera. So now that we've kind of gone over that scenario and how that may apply to a company or in our fictitious scenario here, uh, our goal for our company to be one that's SIM compliant, let's back up a little bit and talk about the SIM and a more holistic approach of what it is. So the common information model, as, it, as its name suggests, there is the model in there and it's a model to use as a reference for common, common standard of operations or how all data is handled. It's worth noting that Splunkers all over are using the SIM. These fields don't change, the tags won't change. Every kind of field name that we're providing, it's gonna be the same nomenclature, the same exact model for any other Splunkers out there mapping to the SIM. So it functions as a way to normalize our data. It's gonna give everyone that same, in, that same common point of reference to leverage for your field names, and working with our data more holistically. And we can also use it as a roadmap. We can use it as a reference, again, for standard ops, how our data is handled, and how we can mature as an organization moving forward. How can we mature our organization to be faster, more efficient, and have better data hygiene by leveraging the SIM? We'll use that as a roadmap to mature our organization, and we'll see how in here in just a minute. So, why would we want to map to the SIM? It's definitely not an easy task to just say, oh, we're gonna be an organization that's SIM compliant. That's, you know, sometimes months of legwork, depending on how large your environment is. Uh, it's a lot of hands down technical approach to making sure all of your fields are mapped to a SIM. So is it really worth it? And I'm here to persuade you obviously that yes, it is worth it. And I'm sure you'll have the same opinion after we see some example use cases on this slide. But one reason you may want to find that it's worth mapping to SIM is for an audit requirement. So if you had senior leadership come to you and ask, or maybe your CISO, and they say, hey, is all of our data SIM compliant? And you can say yes, boom, that's an easy audit win for you and your team and senior leadership as a whole. The next is health checks. So if you map all of your data to a SIM, you can perform faster, more efficient searches by leveraging these data models within the SIM instead of having to search against your raw events. Your Splunk instance and environment will run faster because leveraging data models can also leverage accelerated data models and using different commands such as tstats, which we'll see in the demo, to limit the amount of data that we're pulling back from disk by only searching the TSIDX files using that tstats command, Splunk's gonna have to do less work, less resources, less data is pulled from disk. Your searches will also be shorter as you're going to be leveraging tags and your Splunk instance will just have a healthier feel to it, especially if um, you're using this third point here of premium apps. So a special note here for Splunk Enterprise Security this premium app relies heavily on mapping to the SIM. This is because I don't know if how many of you are familiar with enterprise security, but when you build out your detections to run in the incident pane, those run on correlation searches. And all of those correlation searches are leveraging the tstats command and running against data models. And obviously data models are mapped to the SIM so if you have none of your fields or events going into the premium app of enterprise security to then leverage and run against in a correlation search, you're gonna be missing out on your events. So ES, enterprise security, relies heavily on mapping to it 
And if you're an organization that's using it, mapping to the SIM is going to be a must, not exactly optional or even the question of worth it. It's you're going to have to do it. So some of the sales points there. But for me, in green here, I kind of put it in my own words for why I would want to map to the SIM if I'm an analyst, a team lead, uh, a SOC manager, director, CISO, et cetera. First being, we're going to have easier and more concise detection searches because we're going to have fewer fields to work with. We're also going to increase our accuracy for our Splunk searches to run, as we mentioned, for our health checks. And it's going to be less work to maintain our Splunk environment after we're mapped to the SIM. Because if you think about it, the examples that we've given, if we had to maintain all of those different field names compared to maintaining one concise um, SIM field name, it's going to be a lot less work because it's less fields to track. The uplift of mapping to SIM may take a bit to get there, but once we are there, the maintenance from that point on will drop off drastically. And again, faster performance, leverage those data model accelerations. And if we're working in a security operations center using enterprise security, it will improve our life greatly. So let's look at a quick example. Let's say we have this search of our index and we're gonna have endpoint logs. So all host logs. I'm sure most of you are familiar with EDR solutions, endpoint detection and response, or other um, antivirus solutions out there. Let's say we have two AV solutions to work with here that are going into our index of endpoint logs. Let's say we have McAfee and our semantic endpoint protection logs. In order to search across those logs for having a process run and having it flagged as malware, we would need to know what field and what field value in our McAfee source type and in our semantic endpoint protection source type gets us those values. So as you can see here in McAfee, the action needs to be process ran and the process hash needs to map to known malware. And in semantic, we would have to have the field and field value of event description malware ran. That's a lot to keep in the mind of someone who's trying to build out these detections or someone who's very familiar in our environment um, with our logs, fields, and field values. Now, if we take this example and we map it to the SIM, leveraging tags, data models, event types, enriching our data, um, and having commonality, well, we can accomplish this same search by typing tag equals malware, action equals blocked. I don't know about you, but if I were anybody on my team, I would definitely uh, prefer to only type the latter field as it's a much shorter, easier to remember search to run in Splunk that would get the same exact job done for the search in black there. And our team will be more efficient and happier to work in this type of searching type uh, environment. So to sum it up here, we've talked about our scenario and what the SIM is and the advantages of why we would want to map to it. And that's great, but how would we do it? How would we actually do the act of mapping to the SIM? Well, this slide here outlines everything in steps. So first step being, well, we have to get our data in. As we covered in the scenario, we're an organization that has no problem with data ingestion. Everything's in there and we've been able to get on with our searches without having any drops in logs. So number one's checked for us, our data is in. The next step we do have to pay attention to is to examine our data. We need to get more familiar for what field and field value is which and kind of look at it and evaluate it against what fields it might map to on a SIM data model. So that will take some research on our end, and it's usually the most time-consuming task when you're an organization who starts having this goal, data familiarity and mapping out what's going to go where. Three and four, creating tags for our events. Once we know, like that search example provided on the previous slide, what we're trying to tag, we can have those and validate them and see them in our Splunk instance, and we'll use the appropriate tags to map to the correct data model which will effectively map to the SIM. 
We can normalize our fields as well. As we talked about going through this process, the SIM is a way to act as a data normalizer for your environment by having common field names and validate against a model, map it to a data model, get that acceleration going, et cetera. And six and seven are worth mentioning here that they are optional, um, but definitely advantageous to do step six. Step seven, definitely optional. You can package it as an add-on and have that run in your environment um, to become SIM compliant as well. But definitely steps one through five uh, are critical in order to get your fields mapped to the SIM. And I put a note up here, don't forget, don't forget about TAs, our technology add-ons. These, if you find them on Splunk Base, they may do steps two through seven for you or two through five for you because they're going to be an app or add-on that is SIM compliant, meaning they already have the correct field name associated to map to a data model or a field that exists within the common information model. So always the best practice in Splunk to search on Splunk Base for any kind of TA that will help you with your data ingestion or data normalization progress that's also SIM compliant and taking a, a lot of burden off of you and your team by having the TA app or add-on do the work for you. Put in a link here as well to the Splunk documentation. We're going over the um, common information model and the data model for malware. Um, and we can go ahead and take a look at that. But first, I just wanted to take a quick second now that the lecture point is kind of done before we move into the demonstration to see if we have any questions at all from anyone. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Okay. Well, if that um, changes, we're always available in the Slack channel and you can post your question there. I think uh, that's enough of the lecture. We can dive into the hands-on demonstration here and carrying over from lecture, that link that I had posted, this is present here. All links will also be available in the Slack channel. If you need them, just give us a shout out. This is the malware data model and all of the documentation for the SIM based on the data model that it would map to is available through Splunk documentation. We're just on the malware data model set here. At the top, you can see which tags are used in this data model. We have malware attack and operations as tags used. And here are the fields that would exist in this data model that would get us to mapping to the SIM. So we will get back to this in a second. This is just one place to view it as well. We can also see it in our Splunk instance, which we will. Uh, but first, just wanted to mention the two apps available on Splunk Base that were essential in order to get us through this demonstration and get us to the goal of mapping to the SIM. First one is obviously the SIM. This one is going to give you um, the set of field names, tags, and the data models you need, which are all right here as well into your Splunk instance. And then the Splunk add-on builder, which we will be leveraging today. Um, I find this as the easiest bulk solution to map all of your fields kind of in one go to multiple data models at once, which you will see why uh, when we get into that in the demo. But just wanted to make you aware that these apps are out there for you to use on Splunk Base. And in order to kind of repeat this demonstration on your own instance for you to get practice, definitely would need um, both of these. Okay, so we are on our Splunk instance and the goal here for this demonstration is to get us to map some of our events to the data model of malware. So we can start with a simple query, a tstats count from data model malware and we'll search over all time. And this is just to show that Currently, we do not have any of our events in our environment mapped to the, the malware data model. And as we work through mapping to the SIM or this model, this event, this event count will increase. So I thought it would be really cool to show the progress from not mapped at all to then fully mapped. So 
let's open up a new tab. And the index of data that I have selected for us to work with is going to be um, my computer's logs. This is just some local collection um, that I have on this PC that's running. So um, we're gonna search over all time as my data is historic and take a look at the data. If you remember from the steps slide, um, which had steps one through seven for how to map to the SIM, step one was getting our data in, two is getting familiar with our data. So examining our data, figuring out what fields from our events within this index that we're trying to map to the malware data model might be applicable to carry over to these fields that are present here. So if we take a look um, at our data, looks like we have an MD5 value here for hashes, process name, we might be able to use that, source port, we have a username field. So automatically we can kind of get a sense of Process name, I probably wanna work with this field. So let's check the data model to see where process field may be a good field to map, map to. And I have a couple of fields here related to files. So file hash, we might be able to use that. File name, this is just the name of the file. File path here though, this is the full file path um, with the name of the malware suspected. So I think I would want to map my process name to file path as if we look at it again, it's actually the full file path, not just the last name of the uh, executable. We have a username field here. Um, I'm sure there's a user field here. We could choose to have that one go to this one. And there's probably a source field. So if we had a field, over here for, for host, which we do, that would be a good one to select as source. As source is um, source field, where it's coming from, what server, what instance, so my laptop or, or my box. Just kind of keeping in mind the fields that we're seeing and getting familiar with our data to figure out what fields we might be able to use to map to. So now that we've kind of figured that out, um, let's start mapping. Um, we can do another index as well. We'll keep this one open. Um, let's go into our security index. Because I know that there are IP fields um, available in here. So I want to grab a, a source IP field. source IP, we can pick any of these IPs here to work with as an example. I'll pick the um, 87.194.216.51 IP. And if you remember in the steps, we can leverage tags. So if we were to create uh, a tag for this, we can do that a few different ways. We can do, we can build out our search like we have here, save it as an event type. If we save it as an event type, we have to give it a name and we have to give it a tag. And if we remember from the malware documentation, the tags were malware, attack, uh, and operational. So if we gave it the tag of malware and gave it a color, this would assign it that way as an event type. But we can also um, kind of just save it as its field on its own by dropping down on an event. And if we see the source IP field is here. So if we click on action, edit tags, this is where we can customize them as well. And it's as simple as putting in malware. If we wanted to label this IP um, as something malicious or maybe it's a known C2 channel, um, that's reaching out in our environment and we need to flag this as a known IOC or indicator of compromise as a malicious IP, we can go ahead and create that tag 
and click Save. And we can view our tags by going to Settings, Tags, List by Tag Name, and I'll just filter on the ones that I have created. And we see here our tag of malware has been created with our field and value pair, and it's enabled. So there is our tag. Now, if we wanted to search for that tag, we can go back and search for it against our instance for tag equals malware. And you will see that the only source IP that comes up is that IP that we've created for that tag. And the events that show up are only related to that value. Another way to search tags is if we know the tag name, as we're going to be working possibly with multiple tags, we, we definitely are uh, mapping to the sim. If we wanted to work for look for that specific value of that source IP, you can do tag colon colon, the tag name, and then the value for that. And unable to find it. I would expect the results to show up there. Um, tag malware. But that's OK. Uh, we can follow up with that in Slack or um, fix the SPL there. I wonder if that was the same uh, source IP that we used. I think it was, right? Yeah. I'll just try it one more time. Paste it in. Yeah. OK. I'll have to figure out why that um, is not running. But usually that is how you would search for the tag um, value if you were wor working with more, more than one. But OK, getting back to our, our discussion here, um, we have one tag set up already for malware based on that source IP. Um, if we go back to our other index here of our computer logs, um, we can kind of work with some other fields here and create uh, another tag as well. So let's say um, SVC host. This is obviously a big name for malware out there uh, as it's commonly abused um, as there can be so many service hosts running on your Windows instance that it's common for um, threat actors to take advantage of SVC host and just name their malware SVC host. So if we were tracking um, this specific host or process um, with a known hash, which I don't see my MD5 field present, um, it's OK as well. We can grab. It's a loop back. We can leave it as this. Um, essentially, we would have an MD5 field to throw in here as well um, to kind of make our search more accurate for a known malicious hash, hash associated with service hosts. But if we wanted to tag that as a field as well, um, we can save this search out as an event type, and we can call it um, known IOC for service host. We can tag that of the field. Um, we did malware in the last one. We can use uh, attack here. And we can give it a color of blue, set the priority of high, and click Save. So now I'm all nervous to search for my tags. But um, if we did tag for attack, I would expect these events to show up here. And I would expect them to show up as blue, knowing that this SVC host would need to be looked at in our environment, as hopefully we would have a hash with it as well, as something that needs to be looked into. And we can see the tag value here as well for attack. So moving on, um, we kind of just 
covered a couple of ways here of looking at our data, getting familiar with our fields and figuring out which might map to the data model. And we've made a few event types and tags associated with our data that are also present in the tags that would need to be in the data model that we're trying to map to. So now we can kind of move into um, the other part of the demonstration, which is using the Splunk add-on builder. As I mentioned before, this is kind of the best way to bulk upload um, or bulk create field aliases and evaluations to map to a data model. Uh, and we'll see here in a second. So first thing you do uh, once you launch into the Splunk add-on builder is create a new add-on. We can call this one malware because uh, we're working with the malware data model and all of the other values you can put in your name if you'd like. Um, the version, this is the first time that we're creating it. And we can go ahead and click create. Once this creates, we're then going to be able to import um, source types of our choosing from our Splunk instance and start mapping to it. So now that it's ready to be configured, we can go up top to manage source types. And we're gonna add over here, and we're gonna click import from Splunk. And we're gonna import a source type. So we would have to know which source type we would want to um, work with for our um, My Computers Logs index. Um, but we can choose any of these source types here. I know that this WinNetmon is present in My Computer Log index. So we can select that as the source type that we would like to work with and click save. And now this will take that source type from my Splunk instance and import it into the add-on builder for us to work with. Then we can see the total number of events and our source type is in there. So we can go to map to data models. We can click new data model mapping. And we can give it a name. We'll do a malware example. Our source type, we're going to use the same one. And we can leave the default search there just to search that source type of WinNetmon and click Save. And this is now the window where we're going to do most of the work. So if we remembered back at the beginning of the demonstration, we had all of our fields here, we were getting familiar with our data and we said, hey, maybe process name um, would map to file path, username might map to user, host to source, et cetera. This takes it and puts it in a GUI representation. And just imagine we're only doing one source type here to a, for a very small set of data. You can do this for multiple source types, multiple um, data ingest sources that you have, and map to also multi more than one data model at a time. So it's very easy to do it through this compared to what we just finished wrapping up, which was um, picking which fields, adding the tags, creating event types, and doing it that way. Here, we can do it um, in bulk, all right in front of us. So if we go over here, this is our, uh, event type that came in from the left as imported from Splunk. On the right is where we're gonna select a data model. And this is where you need the SIM add-on from the SIM app from Splunk Base, because this will provide you with all of the SIM data models. And we're working with malware. And we can select both root and child data, data sets from the malware data model to work with. And like I mentioned before, if we were working with more than one data model, um, you could also select it here, be no problem, and import more source types. So once that is set, we can select that data model. And now over here, we only have the malware data model, and these fields should look familiar as they match all the same fields that are listed here in the documentation. So then it's as simple as creating a new field alias. And from our event type, let's just stick with the same fields that we were working with. 
Um, I'm very lazy and this add-on builder GUI makes it very easy for you to not even have to type out your um, field names. So we can grab that process name and if, if you forget what it was, you, um, if you forget what the values were associated to this field name, as you saw before, you can kind of hover over it and it will give you a small preview. Or if you forget, you can go back to your Splunk instance and reference it. But that's why that second step of getting familiar with your data is so important. Um, and we wanted to map this to the data model field of file path because file name would be just the name of the malware, but this had the full file path associated to it. And we can click OK. This will now create um, the alias of process name to call it file path and it will be present in the data model. We can do this again. Uh, we worked with username to enter over here, user, click OK. And we can do one more just for proof of uh, example. Um, we could do, if we had host to go to source, source machine. And essentially we've created three field aliases in a very short amount of time. Once you're satisfied with mapping your fields over, um, they kind of highlight in green for the ones that you've already mapped. Um, as you can imagine, it would get pretty daunting for multiple source types that you're working with um, and multiple data models. You can select done. And if you wanted to validate it as well, um, you can, and that will kind of go through the preparation steps needed to do so. But the add-on, um, since it's obviously associated to our main instance here, if we were to rerun this search again, I would expect our event count to go up as those field aliases are being created and our tags that we created are also associated with the tags to the malware data model and everything seems to be um, upticking as we would expect. So we've taken a few fields from our data sets and uh, um, successfully mapped them to the data model, which means we are SIM compliant. Um, the last thing that I want to show is the other place to view where your data models are present. So this is in settings, data models, and we can just take a look at the malware data model here quickly. Uh, noting that it's not accelerated um, and that we could change it if we wanted to, to have an even healthier Splunk instance. But clicking into it, um, you can see the tags here match the Splunk documentation. Um, the fields are all the same as well. And here you can view your uh, parent and child um, data sets. And if we wanted to pivot into it here as well to get a different viewpoint, of our data model, I would expect the count of the malware um, data model mapping for our fields to be similar to our TSAT search that we ran. But, um, so thank you. Um, that's kind of all I've prepared for our demonstration. Hopefully that was informative and a good coverage of how you can map some of your fields to the common information model and what the SIM is and why it can really take your Splunk environment to the next level and have your team increase their efficiency, cohesiveness, and make your organization uh, a lot more efficient. Thank you.